Tonight's video, I thought I'd try something a little bit different. Mainly because I'm feeling a little bit different. Today was the first day that I've had the house all to myself and nothing terribly urgent to do in quite some time. And rather than fill it with productivity, anxieties and insecurities enjoyed that free space. But now, this evening, the house is quiet, my kids are in bed, and I've got a cozy fire going. My antique spinning wheel is out. I've got some lovely fin wool that I dyed who knows how long ago. And I'm going to have a little chat with you, my YouTube friends. You see, since I had my mammogram and ultrasound last March, where I found out that I likely had cancer, I've been living with some fear. Initially, that fear was heavy and overwhelming. It lay over me, stole my breath, brought tears to my eyes and a frog in my throat. Its grip was heavy around my heart. At 35, I was not prepared to face my own mortality. The thought that my kids might have to grow up without me was too much to bear, and I refused to even address that deepest part of my fear, swallowing it down and burying it to the best of my ability. Subsequent tests and scans showed that my cancer was contained in my breast and that the goal of my treatment would be to cure me, and so the tide of my fear receded somewhat. Under the physical onslaught of symptoms of my chemotherapy treatments this summer, that fear was pushed further away. I had space only for squeezing as much goodness out of my summer as I could between each round of chemo, and while I cried my fair share of tears, I felt empowered by my chemo. We were actively fighting this thing, this thing inside of me that threatened me so. As autumn rolled in and the hard chemo was behind me, it was just so amazing to feel halfway good again. I had finished the hardest part and we could celebrate. Another ultrasound showed that the chemo had been quite effective, although not completely destroying my tumor. My kids returned to school, I returned to my life. The fear was still there, but I had it well under control. Besides, I had many other things I wanted to focus on. Surgery was now on the horizon, and with it, suddenly new fears. Despite having had some surgeries before, my sense of immortality was shaken. Suddenly, I genuinely worried that the relatively routine procedure of my mastectomy and reconstruction wouldn't go so routinely. I held my kids so tightly before leaving them for surgery, and cried into my husband's arms most of the night before. But surgery went well, and I recovered. But it turns out that waiting on results can do a number on your mind and your heart. Suddenly, once again, every ache and pain was certainly secret cancer, spread somewhere else in my body. And that first and worst fear from way back in March was let back out of the corner of my mind where I had kept it locked away. And in the deepest part of the night, when sleep resists me, it was all-consuming. So you would think that when my oncologist called last Thursday, with news that my pathology from surgery had come back totally clean, I would have been thrilled. There was no cancer in the margins, no cancer in the lymph nodes, no need for radiation or additional chemotherapy. Just finish up your remaining rounds of maintenance chemo, and away you go. You'd think I'd be overwhelmed with joy. That I'd feel like I'd done it, I'd beaten cancer. Like maybe my shorn head, my numb toes, the early menopause and the misshapen breast were all just battle scars in a war that I had won. Instead, I felt numb to the news. Objectively, I knew how good it was. And I smiled as all of my family and friends exclaimed their joy for me. I received all of their hugs and love while feeling boxed up and alone. And importantly, still afraid. And that was the problem. And quite honestly, it still is. I think I wanted to get my good results and have them wash away the fear of the past eight months. I wanted for my cancer-free body to regain its ease and its perceived immortality. I wanted so badly to be able to stop wondering if my sore hip, shoulder, toe was secret cancer mets growing in me. I wanted to feel like the me that I was on March 14th, in the before time. The me before the fear. And my good pathology results couldn't give me that. And so how could I celebrate? 
And so, this past week, I've been trying to get used to living in the not-quite-after. I mean, I still have maintenance chemo until the spring, but as my husband pointed out, as far as we know, I don't actually have cancer anymore. And so I'm very good at keeping my fears tucked safely away, for the most part. And I know that over time, they will fade and perhaps one day be forgotten. I'll throw myself into the holiday season and the mad rush of holiday knitting and crafting. And next week, I'll be back to my regular self with a new sweater project, or five, to share with you all. But tonight, I just wanted to share with you where I am today and normalize my fears and my feelings just a little and partake in what has almost certainly been the saving grace of my mental health during my cancer journey so far, sharing it all openly with you. And before I leave you, I wanted to give you all my heartfelt gratitude for every kind word, every well wish, every thought and prayer, every comment and watch. It has meant so much to me, more than I can ever express. So thank you. Thank every one of you. And I'll see you next week with lots more fun from my yarn lab. Bye for now.